Hello, I'm Yi Ning Shi from Peking University and Microsoft Research. Uh, today, I would like to introduce our recent work on deep learning compiler, uh, Welder, which focuses on scheduling deep learning uh, memory access on, on the inference tasks. Uh, so for the background part, a lot of new model architectures has been proposed in recent years, and a number of them are becoming increasingly memory intensive. Uh, in this figure, where we profiled some metrics for Onyx runtime on several inference tasks, we can observe a clear gap between the underutilized computation cores and the saturated memory bandwidth. This indicates that a lot of models are bottlenecked by memory access. <coughs> Moreover, new GPUs with faster tensor cores can further speed up computation, which will also enlarge this gap. So what can we do to optimize these memory-intensive workloads? One important re uh, re reason for this memory bottleneck is that many new model architectures contain a lot of memory-intensive operators like element-wise, normalization, softmax, and many others. These operators incur a lot of memory access on the intermediate results between them. On the other hand, most hardware accelerators have a memory hierarchy with several layers of memory, including the on-chip high-speed cache. For example, on the GPU platform, despite from the global memory, we also have faster shared memory and registers. So in order to better optimize on these models, we need a systematic approach to reuse these intermediate results on faster on-chip memory. For example, we may place the element-wise operators on registers or place some re regional operators like softmax on shared memory. So what about the current works? Uh, currently, there has been a number of works that already utilize this memory hierarchy, but majorly optimized within a single operator. These works like Kutlas, Triton, TVM, or Roller uses the multi-level tiling abstraction to evenly partition the workload onto computation cores. For example, we may have a CUDA block to read a block tile of data uh, onto shared memory and then let each warp to read a subtile of data onto registers. Uh, this multi-level tiling abstraction can generate high-performance kernels as it improves single operator memory reuse rate by caching the data tile on the corresponding memory layer. But it cannot leverage optimization chances for inter-operator memory access. <clears throat> so in order to le leverage both intra- and inter-operator memory optimization opportunity, we reconsider the multi-level tiling abstraction on graph scope and propose the tile graph abstraction. Note that in multi-level tiling abstraction, all intermediate results are exchanged on the lowest memory, memory layer. But in tile graph, it is allowed to connect two operators at a higher layer. When connected at a higher memory layer, intermediate re results won't be written to global memory. For example, in this figure, we can connect the relu on the register layer and then connect the second dot on the shared mem memory layer. So connecting on the tile graph seems to address the inter-operator memory reuse issue. But the next challenge is that how can we collect, collect, collectively schedule the connection type and the tile shape of multiple connected operators? This optimization space uh, is exponentially larger than optimizing a single operator. We should also select the tile shape carefully as connected operators may require a different and is often conflicting tile shape. To address the cha challenges, we designed the welder system. First, welder's front end converts a DN model, which is often an Onyx file, into the tile graph object. Then the tile graph scheduler component is responsible to search for the best connection and a schedule plan for the tile graph. This includes the subgraph scheduling phase uh, and the graph connecting phase. Uh, Finally, there is a code generation module in Welder which is responsible to lower the schedule into a final fused kernel which can be executed on hardware accelerators. Uh, first, in order to resolve the conflicting tile shape uh, when, when connecting, uh, Welder uses a process called the tile propagation. The logic of tile propagation is that one node's tile shape is often dependent on its consumer node's tile shape. So in this step, Welder will iterate over different tile shape for the output node in the subgraph 
and then this tile can be propagated within the whole subgraph. To achieve this effect, each node in the tile graph has an tensor expression, which can be used to analyze its dependent region with regard to the given output tile. On the other hand, since the optimization space can be really large, we don't want to profile all the tiles using black box optimization used in TVM. Uh, so here we, we use a lightweight cost model based on minimizing the memory traffic. Given a tile shape, since Welder can analyze its dependent read or write region with the previous tile propagation step, we can calculate its amount of traffic. This is the most important metric we use to rank and score the tile which represents the amount of data vertically moved from one memory layer to another. And for memory intensive workloads, it is crucial to make this value as small as possible. <clears throat> uh, to find out the tile size that will minimize the traffic in each layer, it seems that Welder still needs to try out different combinations of tiles on, on each layer. Uh, to make this step less difficult, our insight here is that it is reasonable to optimize the tile shape for each operator and each layer sequentially. Uh, for, for example, traffic from L2 to L1 is only dependent on this large L1 tile and is not related to the two L0 tiles. On the other hand, also in this figure, the traffic from L1 to L0 can be divided into two parts and each part can be independently optimized by the corresponding L0 tile shape. So with this independency feature, we can partition the large optimization space into smaller ones and solve them in a sequential manner. Uh, so next, let's take a look at Welder's overall workflow. Uh, Welder will first follow the first connect, then schedule method. First, in the graph connecting phase, Welder will try to connect operators on a higher memory layer, which might include the shared memory layer and the reg register layer on GPUs. After connecting, Welder will try to schedule this connecting the subgraph. And if the schedule is not possible, either because of insufficient memory space or other performance issues, Welder will then undo this connection and try to connect at a lower memory la layer. But if performance gain can be observed after connection, Welder will then keep the connection and then further expand the subgraph to more downstream operators. After the graph connecting phase, we need to schedule the connecting subgraph and assign the tile shape for each node in the subgraph. The tile shape iterator will try out different tile shape to fit into this subgraph. Then this tile will be propagated within the subgraph using the previous tile propagation. Uh, after a tile is propagated within the subgraph, the scheduler can then compute several important metrics for this tile shape, uh, in including the memory footprint as well as the traffic. This static information can be used to roughly score and rank the tile. Uh, finally, after we generate the top K uh, tile shape from the previous device cost model based on minimizing the traffic, Welder's device profiler will profile these configs to get the accurate performance number. Uh, so we don't need to profile a lot of kernels blindly to find the best config, and this makes the compilation time more reasonable. Uh, finally, the connect decision can be made, and we can continue and go back to the graph connecting phase again. Another question about Welder is how to generate the compute intensive part in the tile graph. Uh, Welder's code generation is implemented based on existing uh, TVM compiler, uh, but it is known that TVM generated kernels often cannot compete with the Kublas performance, especially under tensor core enabled cases. Uh, to handle this problem, Welder extracts some uh, high performance block or warp level microkernels from expert libraries like Kutlas. Uh, we drop in these microkernels in the tile graph with TVM's tensorize functionality. We also adopt other widely used optimizations, including the multi stage software pipeline as well as the uh, layout swizzle to achieve the peak computation performance. Finally, Welder uses several techniques to speed up the compilation. Uh, first, the tile graph will be initialized at the very beginning stage, where we set some element-wise connection to register level, which can save the additional cost to further search for them. 
We also add a subgraph cache in Welder. So for each subgraph tune, the best config will be cached. This can be immediately reused the, ne the, ne the next time we meet the same graph structure. So for models like BERT, where each layer is identical, we only need to tune one layer. So fin finally, for the evaluation part, we evaluate Welder on 10 different kinds of models, including image, language, speech, and other tasks. We use the official PyTorch implementation and convert the model to honest formats without further modification. The evaluation is performed on three different kinds of hard, hard, uh, hardware, uh, including the NVIDIA V100, RTX 3090, as well as the MI50 on AMD. We compare Welder with seven different baselines, including uh, other SOTA compilers like the latest TensorRT or Answer. On V100 GPU, we consider both full precision inference with CMT kernels as well as the half precision inference with tensor core kernels. We also consider different batch sizes, including uh, 1 and 64. Uh, in general, by calculating the geometric mean of all the speed up over the 10 models, Welder is 1.4 times faster than, ten than TensorRT, two times faster than honest runtime, and 1.5 times faster to answer. Uh, in the other two devices, Welder still shows consistent speed up over other baselines. On RTX 3090, TensorRT performs best among all the, all the other baselines, but Welder still achieves an average 40% speed up over TensorRT. We also perform some, some ablation study where we construct two variants of Welder, the Welder NUN, which disables all tile connection, and the Welder Base, which only enables element-wise kernel fusion. Uh, in, in this figure, we can see that Welder Base performs similarly with Answer. This is because Welder Base is similar to an Answer's rule-based fusion. According to the order matrix, uh, we, we, can see that we, we can see that Welder's tile graph fusion mechaniz uh, mechanism can help save total kernel count, memory transactions, as well as intermediate result size. <laughs> For the compilation time, although Welder needs to tune from scratch like Answer, uh, Welder's compilation speed can be one or two magnitudes order, or, or, uh, one, or, one or two orders of magnitude faster than answer. Uh, this is because Welder only needs to evaluate a few configs recommended by the device cost model. So there is a conclusion here. Uh, first, we, uh, we find that, that there is increasingly memory challenge uh, in modern deep learning inference workloads. Uh, then we propose a tile graph abstraction that optimizes both in inter- and intra-operator data reuses in a holistic space. We also provide a general operator fusion mechanism. Uh, finally, Welder is exploring a systematic approach to take advantage of emerging trends in future model and accelerators. Uh, thank you for your listening. <laughs>